do not purchase sole function braces until you watch this video first. In standard watch before you buy fashion, we'll talk about what are these braces? What are they supposed to do? What do they actually do? Are there any drawbacks to them? And whether or not they are actually worth the purchase. I really gotta get back out to the mountains soon to really give this car a good shakedown because it's a totally different animal since the last time we really pushed it in the hills. But enjoy some of these clips that I got from the outskirts of town on some of the twisty roads as you listen to this video here. Uh, because of all the bicyclists and hikers and whatnot in the area, I really couldn't push the car all that hard. But I think the twisty roads in this area gave us a good idea of whether or not these braces actually work. So what are they and what are they supposed to do? Well, uh, subframe connectors or chassis braces, they serve, these are terms that you might hear, and they serve the same or similar purpose. Uh, the idea is that they tie different sections of your frame or your chassis together to reduce flex under strenuous situations, whether it's uh, hard cornering or launching with a lot of grip at a drag strip. The idea is to reduce that flex and that twist uh, in your chassis or in your frame of your vehicle uh, to uh, enable or allow you to retain a better contact patch between the tires and the road, therefore giving you better grip, whether it's straight line grip or lateral grip in corners. These braces can certainly be useful in smaller platforms like Z cars or the S2000 or Miatas, for example, but in longer, heavier, longer wheelbase and heavier vehicles like the Q50, for example, I think they become really important at least in theory of course because you know it's a long nose vehicle there's a big heavy engine up front it's a four-door sedan so there's a lot of space in the frame of the vehicle to allow for twisting and torquing and it's something that i've noticed in heavy cornering especially when we we're at the tail of the dragon of course we were uh, I found some other shortcomings in terms of suspension and things, tires and things of that nature, uh, but the f it just felt like there was a lot of tweaking, a lot of twisting under my feet in that region. And that's why I chose the M brace from Soul Function. It seemed to fit in an area of the vehicle that needed the support the most. There's a D brace that goes up further that's uh, under the, um, the engine carriage or the, the uh, cross member. Um, but the M brace sort of connects that cross member to the frame of the vehicle right in an area where it seemed to be getting a lot of stress. So what are some of the drawbacks? The positives, in theory, sound really good, right? It's something that this Q50 could probably use, but what are some of the drawbacks for, uh, of adding rigidity to the chassis, the frame of the vehicle. Well, you know, they can... There are certain design elements and design characteristics to every vehicle on the road that makes them a little bit more road friendly, a little more comfortable to drive, especially when we're talking about a, a semi-luxury vehicle, right? That's why we have uh, rubber or rubberized subframe bushings. That's why we have rear diff bushings and things of that nature. When you add in things like subframe bushing collars or uh, subframe connectors, chassis braces, when, and you add that rigidity back into the chassis of the vehicle, you're essentially negating all of the efforts that the original engineers put in to making these cars ride nicely in the first place. So some drawbacks potentially could be some extra road noise, some extra creaks and groans and squeaks. You're adding some extra stress to certain components that may not have otherwise experienced it. Uh, you know, when you take away some of that flexibility, you're putting some extra strain on certain uh, certain elements. I don't notice any weird noise or groans or creaks or anything like that in this vehicle and I'm already running BC racing coilovers and subframe bushing collars so I, I already feel the imperfections in the road. I already noticed the, the added road noise and a little bit more of a stiff ride so adding this M brace didn't affect ride quality whatsoever in, in my case. Uh, but it's not to say that they don't or others won't, uh, but it's just something to keep in mind. The one remaining question is of course the one that you are all here for. Do these friggin' things actually friggin' work? As for the smaller lateral braces, I gotta say that I think they're probably impossible to feel whether or not they work, but you gotta be hopeful that they do. They're actually tying a couple of components together under the car, and you hope that they're doing what they're supposed to do. I gotta get this car to the actual mountains to really give it a good shakedown, and obviously there's bikers and walkers and things like that, so we can't go hard uh, today in the mountains, but I will say right off the rip, the car feels great. It's a whole different animal with all the other components involved, coilovers, sway bars, brakes, better tires, uh, but 
I'm really trying to pay attention to the brace and what it is doing for this vehicle. Adding a little bit of rigidity and I gotta say I think I can feel it. My complaint before was feeling a little bit of flex down by my feet down at that the gas pedal region. It just seemed like this heavy car as you dive into corners with it wanted to completely twist in half and I feel there's a little extra support there. It may be wishful thinking but I feel like the car is now one complete unit. Getting some great feedback through the steering wheel. Uh, the tires feel great on the pavement. The car is very, very responsive in and out of the corners. For a big, heavy sedan, I gotta say this car feels very nimble, very tight, uh, very responsive in the corners, and it feels like a whole different animal. Some people have brought up clearance issues with these uh, subframe chassis braces. I personally don't foresee any clearance issues. I'm about two inches lower from factory height, and the M brace doesn't seem to be a problem. It's sort of tucked up pretty well. I can see where the D brace might become an issue for clearance because it goes below uh, that engine carriage, below your cross member, which is already sort of low. So if you're adding in half an inch or an inch uh, with the new brace, I can see there being potential uh, you know, scrubbing issues. I will also say that if you're slammed to the ground and you're worried about clearance issues already, you're probably not worried about how well your car handles because you may be beyond the point of practicality anyway. Every piece to this puzzle obviously plays its own part, right? You can definitely tell the impact that coilovers have on this vehicle over factory suspension. You can tell the difference that lowering springs have over factory suspension. You can definitely tell the difference when you add Hotchkiss sway bars to this car. And you can certainly tell the difference that the better tires like these Firestone Firehawk Indy 500s make to this vehicle. I mean, in our case, we went from the factory run flats, which were terrible, to the Lexani LX20s, which were much wider, and they did have uh, dramatically improved lateral grip over the factory run flats they are definitely inferior to these Firestone Firehawk Indy 500s. But that being said, I think these chassis braces or this M brace from Soul Function is sort of the missing piece to the puzzle. All these other components worked really, really well together, but we were still just experiencing a little bit of twist in the frame under hard cornering conditions. And adding a little bit of rigidity, rigidity to that portion of the vehicle, I think, is going to have a massive impact on how this car handles corners. Maybe not a big difference on its own, and it might not be something you notice a dramatic impact with. However, when you tie all of these pieces, all of these components together, it's gonna be huge. I would definitely say that the M brace is the more important out of all of the braces offered for the Q50, even beyond the D brace and certainly beyond the lateral braces. I would suggest though, if you're already spending the money on the M brace, you might as well go forward with the 150 bucks for the lateral braces as well. Uh, it's just a little, another again, added piece to the puzzle. Maybe not a huge impact on its own, but working simultaneously and in conjunction in synergy with the M brace and coilovers, your suspension upgrades, your sway bars, your brakes, your better tires, your lighter wheels. It really has a huge effect on how well and how good this Q50 feels in the corners. Soul Function has been an excellent vendor in this case. You know, during the installation process, we ran, to some, ran into some hardware issues. They responded immediately on a weekend, uh, sent me some stuff out right away to make it right, and they were responsive, uh, they were friendly, they were very customer service oriented, and they're from my home state of Minnesota, so you gotta support the hometown company. But I gotta say that the product is good, it's lightweight, it looks good, it installs Oh, that's one thing we got to talk about. I would say installation is probably a four out of 10 on the installation difficulty scale. If you're mechanically inclined at all, this will be very, very simple. If you've never used rib nuts before, uh, it might be a little bit frustrating. It could be a little bit difficult for you, but it's nothing you can't handle. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. There's not a lot you have to do in terms of preparation under the car. It takes very basic tools to get the job done. You got to remove just a couple of nuts underneath the vehicle and you're all set to go. Again, the rib nuts are the, the biggest pain in the ass, but if you got an impact gun or you've used them before, 
it's not going to be a problem. You can do it. Definitely recommend the Soul Function M brace. I got to say, I'm super excited to get this car out on the twisty roads and really push it. Tail of the Dragon or just the, the mountains of North Carolina. Uh, we got to get there soon because it's a whole different animal and I'm, I'm really pumped. All of the parts discussed in the video today will be linked in the description below, of course. Thank you very much to Soul Function for your support during the installation process. And thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the continued support. It's really, really awesome. Onward and upward for Speed Culture Studios. Onward and upward for you guys. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.